I just watched a science fiction movie about a detective with a special gadget, a unique tool that could intercept and record all messages passing between criminals when they communicate. While the evidence was gathered, the offenders carried on with their business, none the wiser. Needless to say, he was very successful in solving crimes. When it comes to your network, you don't need a futuristic gadget to see what's happening behind the scenes to solve problems. You just need a packet capture. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain some options for taking a packet capture. Next. A common tool used for collecting packet captures is the Wireshark application. Cisco does not support Wireshark, but it is a popular option because it's free and easy to use. When you use Wireshark, you can see all the interfaces. Choose one to view the traffic going on that specific interface. On my system, the Ethernet and Wi-Fi adapter are connected. I'll choose the Ethernet adapter. You can see the traffic flowing via that interface. In the protocol column, you can see the different types of traffic. You can stop this by clicking on the red square button. If you need to see the traffic on another interface, go to the capture menu and choose options. To view the traffic on another interface, select that adapter by double clicking on it. You can see the traffic flowing over that adapter as well. Traffic for that interface is showing now. By selecting any of the packets, you can see more details about that packet. That's Wireshark. Some Cisco small business access points and routers have an integrated packet capture option. However, switches don't have such a tool. Using this Cisco Business 350 switch, you can use the Switch Port Analyzer Span feature to capture the packets. To configure Span, navigate to the Status and Statistics menu. Make sure you are in Advanced mode. Select the Span and Remote Span menu. In this example, I'm going to use Span as my source and destination switch port on this switch. I'll select the Session Destinations option first and click on the Add button. On the Add Session Destination pop-up window, the session ID is populated already, showing as 1, since this is the first session I'm creating. The destination type will be Local Interface. In this example, my laptop is connected to switch port 8 to monitor the traffic, so I'll choose GE8 as the destination port. Enable the Network Traffic option so that the switch will allow the network traffic on this port along with the traffic you'll monitor for the source port. Click the Apply button to save the settings, and then close this window. Navigate to the Session Sources option and click on the Add button. Here, the session ID is showing as 1, along with the destination port number of GE8. For the source interface, I'll select Switch Port 4, which is connected to another switch. I'll choose the monitor type as RX and TX, which indicates the received and transmitted traffic, respectively. Click Apply and close this window. Once you're satisfied with the settings, click the red Save icon at the top of the page. This saves the new settings to the startup configuration on this switch. Go back to your packet capture application, start a new capture, and choose the Ethernet interface from the capture menu. Now you can see the traffic, which is flowing through switch port 4, the source interface. So the switch is mirroring the switch port 4 traffic onto switch port number 8. On the switch web user interface, under the CDP neighbor information option, you can see that switch port 4 is connected to another Cisco business switch, CBS 350. On the port settings page under the port management menu, you can see the operational status of the switch ports 4 and 8 are showing as up. Port 8 is connected to my system where I'm monitoring the traffic. Port 4 is the source port for which I'm monitoring the traffic that is connected to another switch. Once you're satisfied, stop the packet capture by clicking the red stop button. You can save this file for future analysis. To do that, click on the file menu and choose the save as option. You can see that Save As Type is showing in PCAPNG format, which is the default packet capture format in the current version of Wireshark. I'll enter the file name as Packet Capture and click the Save button. 
the file will get saved on my system. This can be viewed later for troubleshooting and analyzing the traffic. Now you know how to take a packet capture for a detailed behind the scenes look at the interactions within your network. You can put this new skill to good use whenever you need to troubleshoot or search for potential vulnerabilities. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.